Hey everybody, it's Dana and welcome back to the Hero Arts YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of stenciling and I'm going to be working with the Woodland Forest stencil. I love the detail work on this stencil. And we're also going to be using a couple of colors of brown ink, which is soft brown and chup of, uh, cup of joe. And we're also going to be using some texture paste. So let's go ahead and get started. Today I'm using the Hero Arts Mist Cardstock. This is one of my favorite blue shades. Love, love, love this color. Now, because this stencil is very detailed, I do wanna make sure that I um, spray the back of it with some Pixie Spray. Pixie Spray is just gonna allow the stencil to stay in place while I'm working with the stencil. So it does not shift or move. And again, because this, tense, this stencil is uh, pretty delicate, it has a lot of large openings um, with like little pointy ends, I just wanna make sure that this sticks firmly to my paper. Once I let that air dry for about a good, I don't know, 10 to 30 seconds, I can go ahead and lay that over the mist cardstock. Now when I stand, so I just try to line it up the best I can on both sides, but I do know I'm gonna trim down this piece a little bit later, so I'm not too concerned with that. Now I can gently rub my hands over the stencil and I know that my stencil is going to stay in place. Now I can go ahead and grab my texture paste. I'm gonna open this up and as you can see, the texture paste is white. So I wanna give this texture paste some color. In order to do that, I'm just going to grab my inks. This is a perfect way to get more playtime using your inks. A lot of times you just stamp with them, but it's great to color your embossing paste or your texture paste with them so you get the color medium that you're looking for. I have a small little spatula here and I'm just gonna grab out a little bit and I'm not gonna go back in with that spatula as long as it has color on it because I do not want to contaminate my jar. So it's very easy to color this texture paste. So you just grab the Hero Arts ink that you want and you're just mixing this up. It kind of reminds me of um, buttercream icing maybe, but you just wanna make sure that you get your ink nicely blended into that texture paste. Now, before I go back to my jar, I am going to clean off my spatula, make sure it's very clean before I pull out any more of that texture paste. Now, this time I'm going to grab a little bit more because I need enough that's going to cover this entire panel. So I don't want to have to mix any more later on. So I'm going to mix a good batch of this right now. Now, as you did see, I have two colors of ink, but I'm going to show you how you can keep your first um colored texture paste and blend it in with your second color. Now, since I have that pretty mixed in and I'm not seeing any white streaks, I'm going to pull in my stencil and start laying down that texture paste. Now I am going to bring some directly from the middle of the card per se, and then I'm going to start spreading it down. Usually I would start off of the cardstock but today I wanted to make sure that I have some on the cardstock that's going to fill in some of those holes, those more detailed holes in the stencil. So that's why I kind of took it first to the paper instead of off of the paper and uh, off of the mat onto the paper. So I'm just pressing that gently into the sections and making sure I have good coverage. Now, again, the best part about stenciling is you just want to make sure that you have an even coat. This way it kind of dries evenly and you don't have to worry about when you pull everything off, kind of areas are looking like they have too much. This stencil is very forgiving, so I'm not con too concerned with that. Once I have my top part down, I'm going to smush my cup of joe onto my mixed media mat, and then I'm going to pull in all of the leftover texture paste and mix it in with that darker brown. So you always want to go lighter color into darker color, and just make sure if you're going to do this technique that your colors are going to blend correctly. Like you would not want to use this brown, let's say with red or with orange, because you just might get a muddy color. And this way, I just want to have two different shades of brown. Again, I'm just mixing that in, making sure I don't have any streak marks that in this case would be the darker brown. Just making sure to mix in all of that color. 
Now I can bring this from the bottom up onto my stencil paper and bring that towards the lighter color. Again, I'm just going for coverage here. I can always go back and wipe off what I don't need. So I'm just kind of marrying up those two colors so they kind of meet in the middle. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not going for a straight line here. I just want the two colors to play nicely together. Once I get most of everything filled in, then I can start kind of going in a diagonal motion to try to get, again, I'm looking for even coverage here. I don't want any area to be thicker than the other. So now I'll just start going across and wiping off any extra um, texture paste that I don't need. Again, making sure that I fill in any little holes that would connect these two colors together. Again, if this does not, um, once you lift your stencil, if you find out that you've missed some spots, again, this stencil is very, very forgiving. And it's kind of addicting to play with your colors of inks with texture paste because the design is always going to be slightly different. So as you can see, I'm just going in a side motion, making sure all of my areas of cover are covered, and then I can scrape off any excess. Now, this texture paste will start drying on you, so you don't want to play around with it too much because you don't want your texture paste to start drying on you while you're still trying to spread it. Again, filling in the last bit of those areas, and then I'm going to gently pull the stencil back just enough that I can get my finger on the other side of the stencil. So I'm being very delicate when I pull this back, I can grab it from the other side and pull that stencil down. And look how gorgeous this is. I love this ombre effect where there's the lighter tone at the top, a slightly middle grade of brown, and then we have the darker brown. I'm gonna set this aside to dry, and it shouldn't take that long to dry. Now we can go ahead and work on the other elements of our cards. So I have this I Love You Dearly stamp set from Hero Arts, and I've already went ahead and colored up one of the images. I used this image last week in a card and you can see it over on my Instagram page. To keep this more of a natural look, I'm going with the sand card stock from Hero Arts. I don't want really any competing color with the blue and the brown. I kind of just want to keep it on a more of a masculine feel where my color palette's really simple. I will bring in my mini Misty and I'm just going to tuck a piece of that sand card stock into the corner of my Misty and then grab out a sentiment. Now I want a sentiment that's going to be a two liner, meaning my sentiment is on two lines. So I'll lay that down onto the paper and I'm going to actually push that sentiment right up to the top of the paper because I really don't want to waste paper here. It's totally not necessary. Once I have it in place, I can close my Misty lid and we can go ahead and stamp. Now I do want this in the darker shade of the brown, so I am going to use that cup of gel and stamp this image, or stamp this sentiment rather. Now I did not condition my stamp, so the first time I stamped it, I did have a little bit of areas that I missed, and that's because I didn't condition my stamp. So the beauty of the Misty is that you can keep it right in place and then stamp again. Now I want a, a dark brown here. I want like a true dark brown. So I'm going to bring in my deer because I stamped my deer three times just to make sure I had a really dark brown. And I'm just trying to see if the outline of my deer color is that same brown. And I'm just a hair off. So I just want to stamp this one more time. Now you do not have to do this. This is just me being anal about my sentiment here. <laughs> But you definitely don't have to do this. You can stamp it once and be done. Once I pull this up, I'm going to have the right shade of brown that I'm looking for. And it matches the outline of my deer. Now I can go ahead and take that out of the way. And I need to trim down this sentiment. So I'll just bring in my paper trimmer. And I want to trim it so that it's big enough for my deer to uh, kind of hang over. So you see, I'm just having my deer in place trying to figure out where I need to trim down that sentiment. And once I have it in, in the correct spot, I can go ahead and trim this down. 
Once it's trimmed, I have a great sentiment for my deer to either sit on or I can stagger my deer over it. Once I have this done, I do wanna bring in that sand color again as a backdrop for my lighter blue piece. I will bring in my trimmer and trim this down to a little bit smaller than a standard A2 card size. So I'm cutting like an eighth of an inch of a difference on each side of the card panel. And that's just because I just want a peak of the white card panel to show through. Otherwise I could have cut it directly to the original size of an A2 card. Once I have that trimmed down, I don't want to waste this paper. So I came in with my rectangle infinity squares and these are also, I mean rectangles, excuse me. These are also from Hero Arts. And I'm going to cut away the middle piece because I just need a border, the outside of this piece. So instead of me laying my blue panel directly on this, I can save myself some cardstock because I only need the framing part around the outside. So I'll use some washi tape to place that in place and then I can run this through my Gemini Junior. When I have this done, I'm going to end up having a card panel that I can use for another card at a later date. And I just have the border piece that I wanted to back my blue piece. Nobody's really going to know, nobody's going to you know, deconstruct your card that they know that you don't have a full piece of paper behind there. So once that's done, I can bring in my blue piece and I have that nice little border around the edge because that's all I needed. And like again, I was able to save some of the paper for a card later. Now I'll grab my liquid adhesive. This is the Hero Arts Precision Glue. And I like to use this glue because it affords me a little bit of wiggle room when I'm putting pieces together. Now with this glue or any glue, you don't wanna to be too heavy handed with it because that will have a tendency to warp your paper. I've never had a problem with the Hero Arts glue because I don't use a heavy hand with it. So I'll line up my blue piece and look how pretty this is. Again, remember I said in a video over on my channel that sometimes I struggle with masculine cards. This is a phenomenal color palette for a masculine card. You're just keeping it very, very neutral by just having like one pop of color and then the rest of the card is neutral. And again, I don't need to use a whole bunch of embellishments on this because the stencil is doing all that work for me. Once I have this lined up exactly where I want it, I can go ahead and put this on a white card panel. Now I love using the card bases that are already cut down from Hero Arts, the top folding and the side folding card bases. This makes my life so much easier when I don't have to get up and cut my paper. My panels are already cut down for me. They're already scored for me. So all I have to do is reinforce that score line and then my card bases are done. I like to come in with a Teflon folder to make sure I have a great crease. But again, these card um, bases, I do believe come in the sand color and I believe an ivory color. The color I'm using today, I believe is Dove. So once I have that card base creased, I'm going to pull in my glue again. Again, I'm not using a lot. As you can see, I'm just really going around the outskirts and just making sure I hit that middle but I'm not using like a wad of glue. And that will always, always, always keep your, your paper from buckling. Now I would just go ahead and lay that down on top. And we're pretty much getting close to the end of the card. What I would like to say is I would love to see what you guys create with this stencil. Make sure when you do that you tag Hero Arts on Instagram or whatever social media platform you're using so they can see what you're working on. I absolutely love the way this card came out. I really want to do this card again and maybe some gold shades on like darker cardstock. So now I can bring in my cute little deer and my sentiment. Now, anytime you're using a sentiment over texture paste, I would just recommend popping it up by using some foam tape or some foam strips just because the paper is not sitting just directly on paper it's going to be sitting on something that's textured so I went ahead and I grabbed myself out just some skinny double-sided foam tape 
And I will place this on the sentiment as well as my little um, deer. Again, that's because the texture of the texture paste sometimes does not like to adhere well with like your glue or your tape runners. And then also this gives my card a little bit of dimension. And there's nothing wrong with adding dimension to a masculine card because once again, I'm not adding a lot of embellishments on this card. I'm really keeping it pretty clean and simple and letting the stencil do the work for me. Once I have off the backer pieces, I can go ahead and place down my sentiment. Now I did not run my sentiment all the way across like a belly band. I did leave the little bit of an edge off just because to me that's a little bit more appealing. Now when I put on my dove, I only, or my deer rather, I only want to put the foam tape where it's not overlapping the sentiment. So I want everything to be flush when I put this together. So I'm only placing that um, adhesive to the spots that are not going to be touching the sentiment strip. Otherwise, if I did that, when I put my card together, it would not be even. So you see just having it underneath and then a little bit on the top of its head, that's going to keep the sentiment and this image flush with each other. Once I pull off those backer pieces, I can go ahead and place that so it sits very cute over the top of the end of the sentiment strip. Now, once that was done, I felt like I wanted to add a little bit more white to the front of this card. So I'm just going to grab my Jelly Roll pen, and this is a number eight, I believe. And I'm just going to put some faux stitching. Faux stitching to me is just one of those added elements to a card that does not really take away from your card panel. It just adds a little bit something to it without any extra uh, foam or any extra stamping. Pardon my gray sparkles. I totally forget when I'm into my crafting how close my camcorder is over my desk. Once I get the last of those faux stitchings in, my card is done. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. And don't forget to subscribe to the Hero Arts YouTube channel. You don't want to miss the inspiration that the designers have using Hero Arts products. Until I see you next time, stay safe and stay well. Bye-bye, everyone.